มีเพลงเกมมีเพลงเนตระดาบมี playing against replicating perfection มีโนไลกี replicating perfection bad big bad eyes boring มี bored มีโนไลกี but มี playing chaos theory with Oracle Me and lots of money so let's see if my Cash overload can deal with uh, replicating taxation. This is an Oracle main deck. Seven out of eight, eight cards in my deck are events, so there should be no problem with pulling off successful Oracle mains turn after turn. And hopefully, this will give me enough click efficiency to deal with replicating perfection. Now, I start with one of the best openings ever. I open with an Oracle with. The one copy of Oracle May in my hand, and another hostage soon follows, which means that I can pull my KD Jones out. So now both of the resources in my deck are no longer in my deck; they are on the board, which means that the chance of me drawing uh, an event card with Oracle May is that much higher. Now I've been always very hesitant uh, to try an Oracle May deck, whether with motivation or not, simply because it gives your entire plan game plan away to the court, because they will know what to expect. When you draw a, a card every single turn. All right, here I make a mistake. Here I play both infiltrations, one for money and one for the expose, which is very subpar play. I should have just thrown the infiltrations away. Instead, I should be clicking Kitty Jones. Click Kitty Jones gives three credits. Infiltration gives less. I should be throwing the infiltrations away, but I didn't, and that was a mistake. Uh, so now he rushes an agenda. Judging by the how hurry how much how big of a hurry he is in, I bet that's a Nisei, and that probably isn't a good way for me to get through. No, actually, yeah, there, there's no way I'm getting through. Perhaps a better play here would be to make two runs, one on remote and one on. One on the central and then one on the remote, just to force him to use the E line to res it, so that I can click through it, and then um, force him to use his Caprice Nisei, force him to play the side game. But it's not a Caprice Nisei. He felt safe because there was an Ash and he had the economic lead at that point. So I wasn't going to access that server any day, but I should have tried to deny him of credits. So that didn't happen, and instead he managed to score the Nisei. Although now he's on one credit, I'm sure he can uh, get up in credits very soon. So right now, what I do is to retrieve the battering ram that I test ran the last turn to get through the Eli. Yeah, I should just click through the Eli instead of getting the battering ram out. I mean, it seems like I shouldn't be clicking through ice, but getting the battering ram out cost me so many resources. I had to click for a credit before using the Eureka, and Eureka and test run cost six to play. The battering ram install cost is five, so I didn't actually cover my costs through doing that. Anyway, since I have uh, Levi AR Lab access to my deck, I decided to use an indexing and take the net damage from the Agura. Now here I did what I consider a pretty good play by me. I see Fito AI and Caprice Nisei, two cards that must go away from his RD. So I place them both at the top and I force a run. Now from his perspective, all he sees is the fetal AI. He doesn't know what's underneath that fetal AI. It could very well be an, another Nisei, and he certainly doesn't want me to score Niseis. It could be a future perfect that forces a side game, which he might not want to take at this point because he's so long credits. So now he has to ponder over whether he gives me the fetal AI or uses Yagura to bring it down and let me take the Caprice, which is exactly what he did, so I happily trashed the Caprice. Um, yeah, I would. I was hoping I would. I could force the Nisei token out, but he still kept the token there, presumably to guard against account siphon. He hasn't seen any of my influence except from, from the one influence on Chrome and the hostage, so I still could be running account siphon. So, I think a small little problem with this deck is that I'm 
pretty much hold into using two clicks every single turn for Oracle May and Katie Jones, leaving me with only two other clicks to use my cards or make runs, which is pretty bad against replicating perfection, obviously. I would much rather be running the remote right now and taking out the Ash, but I don't have the economic power to do that, certainly not after having to make for being forced to make a central run. So that definitely is costing me a lot of time. Now once again I'm drawing cards in perfect order. Um one random draw in the middle just now drew me a tripsis. It's much better to draw it manually than to fail to draw it with Onkome. So it goes in my hand and I decide to play it because that will save me a tutor. And it's in my hand anyway, so no point wasting time sending it to my heap and then retrieving it with test run. It's too slow. So I do play my Tripsis. I charge it, ready for whatever might come next. As he gains more credits, it means that I need to worry about Surugi and the Komaino that I saw in R&D. So this is why I include Tripsis in my deck, because it's pretty much the most efficient breaker within uh, that doesn't cause any influence <clears throat> for low strength sentries with multiple subroutines. Hmm. Cloak and Dagger is very good, but it doesn't fit this deck because I'm playing Cloak and Dagger, I'll blow my deck up with programs, which is what I don't want. Um, the other options are Creeper and Pipeline, both of which are terrible. Um, Pipeline. Uh, yeah, they are, the, the problem is that both Creeper and Pipeline are both very low strength and one of them costs 2 credits to break one routine, the other costs 2 credits to bump one strength, so they are both pretty bad. So Cripsis is pretty much the best, best option around. Alright, um, I'm having pretty bad draw luck. I'm having very good luck with my tutors, which is a good thing, but the bad news is um, I'm not seeing my economy cards. The lucky finds and show gambles are not appearing and I desperately need them because I need to start contesting his Ash server soon. And as long as I have fewer credits than him, that's not going to happen. So yes, that's the, a very big downside of Ash. If the runner has a lot of credits, say 10 or more, Ash becomes very unviable to play because you are forced to boost the trace past a level where the runner can be. And if you boost the trace too high, the runner will just jack out and try again the next time. So that will prevent early game scoring. But right now, he's managing to do it because I'm taking way too long to set up my economy. The cards are just not coming. And right now, Dirty Laundry is a fan, uh, very annoying liability in my deck. I mean, it's one of those cash cards that uh, exists in the game. But against replicating perfection, you can't play Dirty Laundry into any server. SM maybe archives, but I don't really want to hit a Suzuki or Komaino at archives at this point. That will just sap away valuable time for me. So Dirty Laundry is becoming a less and less viable card. It used to be an auto include in many decks. Right now, I don't think Dirty Laundry is a very good card at all, except in Andromeda because of the uh, because she can still make first turn plays with Dirty Laundry and maybe Tenma because of the white credit boost. But other than that. I really would like to swap Dirty Laundry with another economy card, although there aren't that many left um, in the with Infection. I've already spent all my influence on more important cards. Alright, so... Fire off the Sure Gamble, which I finally found, and now I'm looking healthy in terms of credits. But the bad news is, there's a Caprice Nisei over R&D. And uh, I need to go destroy that Caprice Nisei. Although it's getting harder and harder now that he's icing it up. You have to figure that's a Caprice Nisei. It's probably not an Ash. Because Ash doesn't protect against indexing. Alright, so now I Asher. I pull off the Asher so that um, I can put all the cheap ice on R&D and destroy the Caprice from there. That's a huge play that I that uh, is unique to a Shaper deck. And I take the net damage so that I have enough money left over to run R&D later. 
but he ends the run with the Nisei token. So him saving the Nisei token for now, that was a very good play by him. Uh, yeah, mark of a skilled player, knowing when is the crucial time to use the Nisei token. That was the time, and he capitalized on it. So now, I blindly run into R&D and hit a toe move. Figuring that I don't have enough credits left after running the entire server, I just checked out after that. So yeah, I set back to square one once more. The Escher was completely wasted along with the virus token from Pipsis and lots of money. It cost 6 to break through Surugi, which is very painful for me. Usually I'm okay with paying like 5 or 6 for, for breaking through one piece of ice because this deck generates so much money, it's ridiculous. But um, I really need all that money to challenge his remote servers and that's not happening right now. So looking pretty bad. On the bright side, uh, I have 12 credits on Katie Jones. I finally managed to get her to a respectable level. And this is good because it threatens him to no end. He cannot feel safe uh, scoring agendas. Now, my Oracle may just review a VAM. So he knows that a VAM is coming, I might as well just use it now. I hit KT and VAM him down. He has 19 credits, I have 28. He can rest the whole move, but it will cost me less to break than for him to res it. So I still come out ahead in terms of credits, which means VAM will still come to play. Um, I think he made a mistake here. He should have rest the Caprice Nisei that was on R&D. He chose not to. I'm not sure why. I really have no idea. Um, perhaps it's because he was figuring that I would run R&D after this. And he didn't. And by not resing Caprice Nisei, he's forcing me to lose two credits. Um, to vamp him. To vamp him down to zero. So... Uh, at this point, I can actually get through to trash the Nisei. Tobuf costs 5 and Yagura costs 2. So that's 7 credits. Uh, I can run through, trash Nisei and still access one card. Unfortunately, here I do the dumbest thing that anyone could do. I use the 2 extra credits I have to dirty laundry through the server. So instead, I'm not able to access the... I can access the Nisei, but I cannot trash it. So that was very painful. Very, very painful. That was such a dumb, dumb move. I was so desperate to get up to speed in terms of economy that I completely forgot that I couldn't trash the Caprice Nisei. So yeah, I end this run with 5 extra credits, but the Caprice is still on R&D. I still cannot R&D lock him. And right now, I need... Um, the one thing I need to do right now is to lock his R&D because the moment he fishes out any agenda, he can just put it into the Ash server and I can't really contest it. So yeah, very big mistake by me. Um, Harboring the extra attack was completely intentional. He can blow up my Oracle May or KD Jones for all I care. That will severely slow him down and actually give me time to trash his Sundew, which I would be more than happy to do. So he doesn't fall for the bait, so instead I'm looking to clear text this turn. Uh, I cannot leave the text on for too long. I attempt a run on Archives, figuring that he cannot rest a Surugi. He shows me the pop, and I get through. Yes, a Swordsman will be pretty deadly there, <laughs> admittedly. Then next I draw with uh, Oracle May, and I see the legwork. But here's the problem, he sees the legwork too, so he definitely sees it coming. He knows that a legwork will come sooner or later, so he, that's a, a telegraphing to him. You better ice up at HQ, and you bet that he will soon. This is why I don't really like Oracle Me. It might give you a lot of click efficiency, but it's essentially a perma permanent celebrity gift for the court. And you don't want that. Well, he's celebrity gifting me too, and I see his fetal AI, so that's what I'm aiming for. So knowing that there's a fetal AI in there, my legwork shall come in soon to rescue the fetal AI from the evil clutches of replicating perfection. Alright, you see I run a ninja, one copy of ninja. That is my solution to high strength uh, sentries, the likes of Grim, Ichi, both versions, and subpar, something, uh, yeah, uh, more subpar would be Archer. 
but most of the four and five strength sentries are very easily dealt with by ninja. It's the low strength sentries that I'm concerned about because the click efficiency isn't there for ninja to break the likes of Komainu and, pa and Surugi. Yeah, it's better to just use Gripsis instead. Alright, so he just gets more money. So basically my VAM has been uh, nullified by this point. Uh, I've been wasting my time trying to trash his Sandu and all that, but yeah, it was a very futile effort because he got back to speed very quickly. There's really not much I can do at this point. I draw into more cards. Now, I have 3 clicks left here. It is very easy for me to leg work into HQ and grab his Fito AI. I knew I could do that. The problem with doing that is that if I do grab the Fito, I will suffer 2 net damage which will take out my last Levi AR lab access. And I definitely need the Levi access to recurse my R&D and HQ digging devices, leg work and Maker's Eye and indexing. So Using the legwork here wasn't an option, unfortunately. Um, yeah, that's the problem with having no same old things in this deck. And I can't run same old things because Oracle May, it's a resource. So yeah, that's coming to bite me right now. A lot of problems with running Oracle May, uh, besides having to spend influence on hostage and her. So I finally do decide to use my Levi AR lab access, and I do draw into the legwork that I held previously. So that option is still available, and I decide to use it right now while I still can. So I pay through my teeth just to get through HQ. It is pretty expensive, but well, that's what I'm supposed to do with all my credits. Get through servers, guaranteed, see three cards. Komainu, Komainu, Eli. That was a 3 in 4 shot of me hitting the Fetal AI. Mind you here, 4 cards in hand, 3 in 4 chance. Nope, it didn't get there. So, he quickly installs it in the Ash server before I can do anything, and I cannot contest it because I lost all my credits getting through the HQ. This is really dumb. Right. So, nothing much I can do but to solidify myself, and hopefully that wasn't a future perfect that he top decked. If it was a future perfect, well, that's game. So, he scores it. Right. Now what? Uh, Hopefully my big pool of credits can deter him from scoring one more agenda. Remember that he cannot fast advance. So as long as I have enough credits, I should be able to keep him from scoring agendas so long as he doesn't draw another Caprice Nisei. That would really be the nail in the coffin for me. So now I look to continue snowballing credits, but uh, there's no time for that. Now... He threatens to win the game with a double advance in that remote, so I make my way to the easiest server, which is Archives, and suffer the 2 net damage. Then I make a run on that server, after loading Cripsis once. I break through the first Surugi, and decide to just take the 3 net damage, because why not? Um, this is really the final run right now. That could be a Fito AI that could cost me the game, but so be it. If it's a future perfect, that would put me way, way up there in the lead. So I'm banking on that right now. I see the second copy of Surugi, and having no Cripsis virus tokens left, I knew that was the end of the road for me. But he reminds me that I can actually trash Cripsis and still get through. So that's pretty amazing. Uh, thanks to him for being such a sport, but yeah. I completely forgot that point about Cripsis that you can actually trash him to get through the server. Uh, and then he traced Ash for 4. When I saw that, I knew what that meant. Yes, it was a fetal AI, and I don't even score it because I flatlined myself, impaling into that little baby before I can even fetch the extra gender points. So to conclude, I hate Jinteki replicating perfection with a passion. It's so darn annoying to play against. And yeah, I'm just not a fan of big ice decks right now, having to play against them because runners have very limited tools to deal with uh, big ice decks. As you can see, I've tried my best. I've got to lots of credits and I'm using pretty decently big breakers. But there's only so much you can do as a runner when there's Caprice Nisei and Ash on the enemy side. Uh, 
I'm really, really waiting for the new breakers in uh, the upcoming data packs to come out. Because right now, having to fight against uh, corpse when you have such inefficient breakers is a huge pain in the butt. And when you finally get to the root of the server, there's Caprice Nisei waiting to cut you out of it completely. And that just rubs the salt in the wound for me. So yeah, that is why I prefer playing criminals. At least I can do something early on instead of resigning to uh, fate of side games in the late game when playing such a deck. Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Have a good time. See you around.